Alright guys, if you're thinking about printing t-shirts and selling them online or locally, you definitely want to check out this method called direct-to-film. So the first reason why I really like the direct-to-film method is the consumables. The consumables are actually not that expensive and they last for a very long time. Now white ink is typically what you would use the quickest because it uses it as an underbase. That way you'll be able to print on dark shirts and black shirts. They gave me two white ink bottles. These are 500 milliliters. This white ink bottle I haven't even opened yet. And this one I probably still have about a fourth left. My container inside of my printer is completely full. As for my colored ink bottles, I still have about a third. And the container inside of my printer is almost full. Another consumable that you need is the film roll. This one came with 100 meters. And purchasing a new set is actually relatively cheap. I think it's about $80 or less for another 100 meters. Now comparing that to heat transfer vinyl, I used to pay about $80 or more for 10 yards. So this roller right here is an A3 format. So it's about 11.75 inches wide. If you shop around, you can find film that are longer than this at 13 inches wide and 100 meters long. So the last consumable is the adhesive powder. A little bit goes a long way. So you can see here, we still have a lot and there's plenty. From what I was told by Pro Colored, you can get over 800 prints from one set of 500 milliliter bottle of ink. Now that's a lot. Now I haven't ran through a set of ink yet. As I mentioned earlier, I barely put a dent in it and I printed over 100 prints. Now because it is an inkjet printer, there is some maintenance to it. So let's talk about the maintenance. As far as maintenance goes, the daily maintenance for this machine is really just a simple print head cleaning. And you can just do that through the software on your computer. So for me, before I use it every day, I do a simple print head cleaning to see if the print head is clogged or not. Then I do a nozzle check to see if all the lines are there. If it's not clogged, I can go ahead and use it as normal. So the printer has been sitting here for about three or four days without being turned on or used. I turned it on and printed an image right away to see how it would look. And this is how it turned out. As you can see, the top half of the image uh, is really black and discolored. I also did a nozzle check at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it, but the lines are not all there. There's some missing lines. So whenever you first turn on the printer every day, or if you've left it there for a few days like I did, make sure you do a head cleaning first and do a nozzle check before you print a test image. Now in my experience, if I leave it non-use for two to three days, the white ink will get clogged. Now I've left this machine for up to five days without using it. I don't recommend that. The colored ink seems to be very easy to fix, which is one or two print head cleaning, but the white ink needs a little bit more work than that. So the ink will settle in the tubes and they look kind of gray or translucent. That's when you know that the white ink tubes are kind of clogged. So I went ahead and did one or two print head cleanings and all of the colors seem to be running fine except for the white. So this is the front of the print and there's supposed to be a white layer on the back and it's supposed to be more of a solid white and this is almost translucent. This means that the white tubes are clogged and we need to unclog them. Now if you've done a print head cleaning and all the nozzles are printing correctly, the color should come out very vibrant like this. And if your white ink is not clogged, it'll come out a lot more vibrant and white on the back. I don't know if you can see it clearly on the camera, but it's a lot more solid than last time. So now I'm going to show you how to pull the white ink so that the tubes will be solid white and you don't waste any ink by doing an ink flush. Don't ever do an ink flush. If you ask the manufacturer, they will tell you to do an ink flush and that just wastes a lot of ink. To unclog it, it's very simple and easy. Just use one of the provided ink syringes. What you do is you pull the ink out from the tubes and then you would put the ink back into the ink container so you don't waste it. Basically what that does is it pulls the ink through the tubes to give it a fresh new set of ink through there and that'll help your print head from being clogged. 99% of the time, every time I do that, it fixes all the issues of the ink settling. Those are the only things that I've had to do and the printer will print perfectly after that. Now if you're out of town for more than a week or you want to put this into storage and you're not going to be using it for more than 7 days, it's recommended that you get this kit. 
I'm not sure if it comes with it. Mine didn't. What you want to do is fill this container maybe like halfway with rubbing alcohol and then you would pull the rubbing alcohol through like you would pull the ink through the tubes and fill this sack up and then put it into the print head. The existing ink sack that you have on your print head you would remove them. You can either saran wrap it and put it in a ziplock bag so that air doesn't get into it and dry it up and that way your print head does not dry while you're out of town or putting this into storage. Now let's talk about making money with this machine. The fact that it can print full blown color is just amazing. That would open up a lot of doors for doing custom orders. With my estimation with each print costing less than a dollar, that's a really good profit margin. So if you're selling a shirt for let's say $20, the shirt costs $3, it costs you a dollar to print the shirt. And so in total your cost is $4, that's a $16 profit. And being able to print full blown color, you can stand out from the rest of the competition especially if you're trying to sell it online like Etsy or on Amazon. But even if you're not selling online and you just want to sell locally, maybe reaching out to local businesses, a lot of local businesses will have their own brand or logo that they want to print. Usually they want to print in color and with this machine you'll be able to do that without having to turn down any businesses. And because this printer is basically print on demand, if you have a business prospect and they want to test out one of your shirts, you can print out a small batch or even a demo shirt for them. The opportunities out there are just endless. Now let's go over some things that I think could be improved with DTF printing, uh, specifically with this machine that I'm currently using. First off, like any DTF printer or even direct-to-garment printer, the white ink tends to get clogged more than any other ink. Matter of fact, in my experience, only the white ink gets clogged and none of the other inks. I think to prevent that, if they had some kind of system that would just recirculate the white ink would be great, or some kind of mixer inside of the ink container to prevent it from sitting. Second, the three buttons on the left side of the printer, which is the trash can button, the ink button, and the paper button, they don't really do anything. Uh, if there's like an error, the only way to reset the printer is to turn it off completely and turn it back on. Another thing I would like to see improve is a stopper on the film row here. There's not a stopper so sometimes it will unravel and it will be like a clump of film laying on the floor before I notice it. Another minor improvement I'd like to see also is the paper feed button that's on the side. It moves really fast. It doesn't move slow so if you press it, it just jerks. I wish it moved slower so that I can be more precise and not waste any film. Next would be with the RIP software itself. In order to run the RIP software, it only works with Windows, which is okay, I guess, uh, but it also only works if you have this USB dongle. If you don't have this dongle, if you lose it, you need to get it replaced because the software would not work without it. I wish they would just give every individual a separate serial number, maybe. And because of this USB dongle, um, I had to get an adapter to work with my PC laptop because the only ports on my PC are USB-C. Not a major issue, but it's something that you need to know. And the final improvement that I could think of is with the RIP software. As of right now, you cannot remove any colors from their design. So for example, if I'm going to be printing a design on a black shirt, if I can remove some of the black color to save black ink, um, that would be great. But with this RIP software, there's not a way to do it yet. Same thing if I'm using a design that maybe has a lot of white color and I'm printing it on a white shirt. If I can remove the white printing, it will save me a lot of white ink. Anyway, all of those things are some things that I would like to see updated or corrected in a future update. All of them are really just minor kind of nitpicking. Overall, the powertrain of this printer works. It does what it's supposed to and it prints beautifully. So with that being said, I know many of you are probably wondering how long does it take to print one print? I'm going to do a few prints, maybe some common sizes for youth and adults. And I'm going to time them and we're going to see how long it takes to print one print.
So who is this printer for? I think anyone who's looking to get into the t-shirt business seriously, this is a good investment as it can print in full color and it is print on demand. It doesn't take up a lot of space and costing less than a dollar per print. I think you can get a good return on investment even if you sell your shirts cheap at 10, 15 or 20 dollars per shirt. And that's being very conservative. And this is also great for established print shops who wants to print full color, print on demand and small custom orders. As you know, screen printing takes a lot of work. Many screen printers won't even do custom orders or small orders of 10 or 20 shirts. Now, if you guys have any questions on what we talked about or went over today, leave it down in the comments section below. I'll also have links to products that helped us in our printing process down below in the description.